Hi everyone, welcome to this quick PowerPoint on some basics about the new. So in order to understand all the things that we're going to learn about going through the semester, um, it, there are a couple of really important things to make sure that you get a solid grasp on. So in, uh, we've had a little bit of discussion about what is nutrition. Some key points about how to define nutrition is that it's important to understand nutrition is a science. So just like physics or biology or chemistry, nutrition is a science of understanding how food works within the human body. That also means that it is an ever-evolving process of figuring out what we don't know and seeking to understand it better. So that's part of why we've seen a lot of confusion and disagreement about facts in terms of human nutrition. Um, so it's really important to know that as you go through learning about nutrition, you have to keep a very open mind um, and do as much as you can to look at all of the sources of information to um, fully understand what's being presented and, and know that sometimes um, what's presented as fact is only what we think to be true um, while we try to work to prove it to be true. Um, nutrition definitely highlights the relationship between diet or the way that we eat and illness. So in this class, we're going to use the word diet a lot. And please understand that diet simply refers to the way a person eats and the foods that compose a person's daily food intake. So we will not, we will rarely use the word diet to refer to, you know, following a way of eating that is restrictive and that limits specific nutrients. Um, rather, we're going to use the term diet to talk about what a person is eating and how a person is eating. Um, no negative or positive connotations there. That's simply the definition of the word diet. Uh, in particular, we understand that um, food or diet can definitely uh, strongly influence chronic diseases like obesity, diabetes, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases or diseases of the heart. Um, nutrition is also a really big component of, of wellness. So wellness is kind of a new wor word. Um, it's definitely uh, kind of a buzzword these days, but wellness refers to the absence of disease. So someone is considered well if they are disease free. Nutrition plays a really big role in whether or not a person is disease free. That kind of gets nested, nutrition kind of gets nested as a component of uh, physical health. So other things that are going to affect a person's wellness are going to be their spiritual health, their emotional health, their social health, and their occupational health. So within nutrition, we have to understand that there are certain kind of building blocks of the science. So those building blocks we refer to as nutrients. As we know, it, there are six uh, major nutrients. We classify them as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water. And nutrients are defined as chemicals that are critical for growth and function of the body. So there are definitely chemicals present in food, present in um, paints, present in cleaning agents, whether it's soaps that you use for your body or soap for your clothes or the dishes, um, cleaning agents, um, but also chemicals present in body lotions, present in makeups and perfumes and deodorants. So there are chemicals literally everywhere. Um, and in terms of the chemicals present in our food, by and large, the chemicals in our food are going to be considered nutrients, but there are plenty of chemicals in our food that are also not nutrients. Alcohol is a great example. Um, it's, a, it's a chemical, literally. It's just a combination of different elements, um, but it is not considered a nutrient because it is not critical for growth and function. So then we further classify nutrients as either macro or micro. Um, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are our macronutrients. Vitamins and minerals are our micronutrients. And then water kind of gets left out um, in its own category. So macronutrients um, are called macro because we need them. Um, our body requires them in larger quantities. Um, micronutrients are required by the body in smaller quantities. So 
We're looking a little further um, at what macronutrients and micronutrients are. Macronutrients, again, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. All macronutrients are going to contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All macronutrients are going to provide energy to the body. That means that when we consume carbohydrates, fats, or proteins, our body is going to break these molecules down and then reconfigure them into a type of fuel that the body can then use to support physical activity and physiological function. Physiological function is anything from digestion to muscular function to um, brain function uh, to heart function. So just a few quick notes on each of the macronutrients, carbohydrates. Their primary role in the body is to serve as a source of fuel. So we break them down and we reconvert them into um, the body's fuel source. Uh, most foods that we eat contain carbohydrate. There are definitely different types of carbohydrates um, and our digestion of them varies, but we'll look at that uh, in a couple weeks. Fats, also a very important source of energy. The body definitely uses carbohydrates and fats as energy for the body. Fats are also really important because they serve as structural components of cells uh, throughout your entire body, in particular in your brain. So where carbohydrates serve primarily as fuel, fats can be fuel, but fats are also very vital to making a strong, healthy body. Fats are also critical for getting um, fat-soluble nutrients transported throughout the body. <clears throat> um, as the picture shows, some fats are going to be more beneficial than others. Same goes with carbohydrates. And then proteins. So just like fats and carbohydrates, proteins also contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But different from fats and carbohydrates is that proteins also contain nitrogen. So that's going to affect how we metabolize and digest proteins. Proteins can be used for energy, but that's not typically their function in the body. The primary jobs of proteins are to serve as the building blocks of our cells, uh, structural components of our bones, and proteins also can, we can turn them into molecules that uh, basically carry out the process of metabolism or digestion and transport nutrients throughout the blood, so just like fats. So again, carbohydrates, mostly a fuel source. Fats, they're a fuel source and very important structural um, function in the body. Proteins, not so much a fuel source, although we can use them if necessary, but really we need proteins to build our bodies well. Then we look at the micronutrients, so vitamins. Um, vitamins are considered organic molecules because all vitamins contain carbon, um, just like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Those all contain the carbon molecule, and that is um, scientifically speaking, organic is defined as containing the carbon element. So our macronutrients and our vitamins are organic, technically. So what this also means then is that because they contain this carbon, they can be, vitamins can be destroyed um, or basically disfigured, if you will, by heat. So high temperatures, that would be like cooking something at a high heat, uh, being exposed to light. So when you, if you leave a head of lettuce out on the you know, out on your kitchen table for a couple of days, also being exposed to air, um, or a basic environment, so alkaline rather than acidic. All of these things can start to disconfigure the structure of the vitamin, rendering them um, useless, if you will. We, cla we further classify vitamins as fat-soluble and water-soluble. So fat-soluble vitamins can be stored in fat cells in the body. That also then means if we take in too many, too much of a fat-soluble vitamin, will store it in the body and that can become toxic. Um, because they're fat soluble, they require fat to absorb them from our food. And then water soluble vitamins, if we take in too much of a water soluble vitamin, we'll just excrete the excess in our urine. Minerals are techni technically considered inorganic because they do not contain carbon. They only contain the mineral that it is. So minerals already exist in their simplest form and they, they therefore cannot be broken down or degraded. Uh, if you look at the image on the right, um, a lot of minerals as we know them exist in rock, right? So a lot of rocks are made up of different minerals. And what happens is the, the rocks slowly get, you know, 
basically really gently brushed down and broken off little little bits and pieces break off of the rock and it becomes incorporated into the soil uh, and then the plants absorb these minerals from the soil so that's how we get minerals into our food is through mineral rich soil um, we can further classify minerals as major and trace major minerals are just minerals that we require in the body in larger quantities those are going to include calcium phosphorus, sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium, and sulfur. Trace minerals we need in the body in smaller quantities. So iron, zinc, copper, um, manganese, fluoride, chromium, molybdenum, selenium, and iodine. So all required for the body to be well and healthy, um, just required in different amounts. And then minerals have several different functions. They play a role in fluid balance, in bone function, blood function, energy production, hormone production, and digestion. So these are really, really crucial. They basically help support the activity of proteins and fats. And last but not least, we have water. So we all know water is very vital for survival. We can survive several days without, we can survive several days, like weeks without food, but we can really only survive a few days without water. So water is crucial. Um, typically we consume water through drinking it. Uh, we also do get a little bit of water in different fruits and vegetables, some more than others of course. Uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, obviously if, if we're eating dried fruits or vegetables, um, they've been dried because water has been taken out. Uh, drinking enough water helps to ensure that we have a proper balance of water inside and outside of our cells. And ensuring this proper fluid balance helps to regulate nerve impulses, so sending messages from the brain, regulating our body temperature, allowing our muscles to contract, uh, moving nutrients from our digestive organs to our body cells, and then also excreting the byproducts or the waste products of digestion and also the waste products of cellular activity. So those are some really, really crucial nutrition basics in a nutshell. Please take your time to review anything um, that wasn't too clear. We're going to dive into each one of these in much greater detail as the semester goes on. Thank you.